In this video, we're going to talk about how we can predict if a reaction will go forward to produce more products to get to equilibrium, or will go backwards to produce more reactants to get to equilibrium. And to do this, we're going to think about equilibrium as kind of the low spot on a valley. So equilibrium is this little area right here, the perfect amount of reactants and products. And so if we find ourselves anywhere along this down slope, uh, we have too many reactants. And in order to reach equilibrium, we have to use up some of our reactants. So we need to decrease the concentration of our reactants. And we need to increase the concentration of our products. So this reaction would proceed forward to equilibrium. Conversely, if we find ourselves on this side of the downhill, so past equilibrium, we have too many products. So we missed equilibrium by a bit, and we have too many products now compared to reactants. And so the way to fix this is we need to use up some of our products. So we need to decrease the concentration of our products. And in doing so, we increase the concentration of our reactants. And in this example, our equilibrium will move backwards or in the reverse direction. Our reaction will go in the reverse direction to reach equilibrium. The way that we can compare or determine where uh, how a reaction must move to reach equilibrium is using something called the reaction quotient. And this is the letter Q. Now Q is calculated basically the same as K. So I'm going to write an example reaction here. So let's say we had A times A plus B times B going to C and D, kind of our standard reaction. Now if I wanted to write the K value for this, I would write my products, the concentration of my products in moles per liter raised to their coefficients over the concentration of my reactants in moles per liter raised to their coefficients. The thing that we don't write here, but that's implied, is that these are all equilibrium concentrations. So this K value is only valid if the system is at equilibrium. Now, if we want to determine which way it should shift to get there, we're going to calculate Q. And you're going to notice that Q looks an awful lot like K in how it's calculated. So it's still products over reactants. Um, but this time, they are not at equilibrium. Sorry for my writing. Hopefully a new stylus is on the way next week. Uh, so they're not at equilibrium. And we can compare Q and K to determine which way our reaction will shift. So if Q is smaller than K, our reaction is going to proceed forward. meaning that the concentration of our products will go up and the concentration of our reactants will go down. This is because if Q is bigger than K or smaller than K, it means that we have too many reactants and not enough products. Now, if Q is greater than K, uh, the reaction will proceed backwards. And this is because we have too many products um, and not enough reactants. So we're going to in decrease the concentration of our products and we're going to increase the concentration of our reactants. And then lastly, if Q equals K, it means that the reaction is at equilibrium. And it won't move. 
this is useful if you're given the concentration of both reactants and products at the beginning of a question. Because you need to use this to determine if the reaction is going to move forward and increase the concentration of products while decreasing the concentration of reactants, or if it's going to move backwards in the reverse direction and decrease the concentration of products while increasing the concentration of reactants.